Here is a brief forward to my video story on Dastin's dream. Jacob Russell has a YouTube channel and he's an excellent musician and a good friend. He uploads short music performances, both his unique covers of other songs and his own compositions, one of which is the background music in Dastin's Dream and Hermes Bird. I recommend his channel to anyone who might be interested in his brand and style of music. There's a link to his channel in the description of this video. Thanks for the music, my friend. On page 472, in the notes of Tantrum Chemicum Britannicum, Elias Ashmole writes the following about Dastin's dream. I am persuaded this work, called by the name of Dastin's dream, has been turned into English verse by some later philosopher. For in his days we meet with no such refined English, and in Latin we have his vision, with which, in effect, this agrees. The time he lived in is not certainly known, I find none that mention it, but tis believed it was long since. Our countryman Bale speaks of him, yet throws at him and this science some uncommonly abuses. Nevertheless, he calls him Alchemistice Artis Aetate Sua Primus et in Anglia Magister Unicus, the prime alchemist of his age and the only master thereof in England, a producer and foreteller of things which, it seems in his apprehension, he could not attain to by nature. He made a diligent search into all things that might possibly be found out in chemistry, insomuch that he boldly wrote and published several experiments. And though Pitts renders him a very poor man and lays the blame upon his own artifice, being so much addicted to alchemy, yet questionless, if he were master of such learning as they confess him to be, and his poverty were not voluntary, he might have advanced himself to riches when he pleased. He wrote these following books, Super Arte Alchemistica, Visions ad hoc elias, Secreta Secretorum, Speculum Philosophorum, Sepientum Arenum. Maeris saith he had left behind him a considerable chemical tract which Janus Lacinaeus hath put in his collections. Not unlike, but this may be in Lacinius his Pretiosa Margarita Novella de Tesoro, Ac Preciosissimo Philosophorii Lapide. But the book I have not yet seen, and therefore cannot tell whether what is there published of Dastin's be any of the before-mentioned works. And thus begins. This is the work of John Dastin, known as Dastin's Dream, otherwise known as the Visio of Dastin. Not yet full sleeping, nor yet full waking, but between twain, lying in a trance, half closed mine eye in my slumbering, like a maw wrapped of all cheer and countenance. By a manner of weaning and remembrance towards Aurora, ere Phoebus uprose, I dreamed one came to me to do me pleasance, that brought me a book with seven seals close. Following upon, I had a wonderful dream, as seemed unto my inward thought. The face of him shone as the sunbeam which unto me this heavenly book brought, of so great riches that it may not be bought, in order set by Dame Philosophy, the capital, and the flourishing rock by a wise prince called Theology. This book was written with letters or yet, perpetually to be put in memory, and to Apollo the chapters consecrate, and to the seven gods in the heavenly consistory, 
and in Mercury's little oratory groweth all the fruit in breeze of this science. Who can express them and have of them victory may claim the triumph of his mineral prudence. Of this matter above, between stars seven, by gods and goddesses, all of one ascent, was sent Caducifer to earth down from heaven, Saturnus, as Bedel by great advisement, for to summon a general parliament by concord of all both old and young of age, to say in brief their counsel most prudent, for common profit to knit up a marriage, between twain born of the imperial blood and descended from Jupiter's line, of their natures most pure and most good, without infection, their seed is most divine, that no eclipse may let them for to shine, so that Mercury doth stint all debate, and restrain their courage by meekness them incline, that of foreignness they be not injured. For the sun that sitteth so high aloft, his golden dewdrops shall clearly rain down by the mean of Mercury that moving first made soft. Then there shall be a glad conjunction, when there is made a separation, and their two sperms by marriage are made one, and the said Mercury, by division, hath taken his flight and from both is gone. These be the two Mercury's chief of philosophers, revive it again with the spirit of life, richer than rubies, or pearls shut in coffers, washed and baptized in waters vegetative, the body dissevered with heat nutritive, by moderate moisture of putrefaction, so that there is no excess, nor no strife of the four elements in their conjunction. The grain of wheat which on the ground doth fall, but it be dead, it may not fructify, if it be whole, the virtue doth appall, and in no wise it may not multiply. The increase doth begin when it doth putrefy. Of good grafts cometh fruits of good lastage. Of crabs verjuice, of ash is made lie. Of good grapes followeth a good vintage. Who soweth good seed, reapeth good again. Of cuckles sown there can grow no good wheat, for as such a plowman travaileth in vain. To fruitful land cuckle is not meat. Gall is ever bitter, honey is ever sweet. Of all things contrary is false connections. Let male and female together ever meet, but both be cleansed of their complexions. A man of nature engendereth but a man, and every beast engendereth his semblable. And as philosophers rehearse well can, Diana and Venus in marriage be notable. A horse with a swine joineth not in a stable. For where is made unkindly genitor, what followeth, but things abominable, which is to say monstrum in nature. All this I find in the said book, brought to me when I lay asleep. And of one thing good heed I took, the wolf in kind is enemy to the sheep, the rose full diverse to the wild neep. For things joined that be contrary, dame nature complaining doth fit and weep for false receipts found in her library. And there it was so piteously complained, that men so err by false opinions, that be so far from truth away restrained, like as they had lost wholly their reasons, not considering in their discretions. What mischief followeth as is oft seen by these false board connections, as doth lepers with folks that be clean, 
Notwithstanding, he that is set so high in heaven, crowned with a crown of bright stones clear, born there to reign as chief chosen of seven, equal with Phoebus, shone in the same sphere, without difference, as clerks to us leer, set there most royal in his diadem, very celestial and angel-like of cheer, and in all virtue-like as he did seem. And in that book, I found well by writing, like as the process made mention, how that there was once a mighty rich king, clean of nature and of complexion, void of deformity from head so forth down, which for his beauty as it is specified, and for his cleanness most sovereign of renown, was among planets in heaven stillified. Certain brethren I found, he had a number, and of one mother they were born every each one. But a sickness did them sore cumber, that none was whole on his feet to go, course of language, clear voice had they none, for with a scab that was contagious they were infected, whole was there none, forever exiled because they were leprous. The said king rose up in his royal sea, seeing this mischief, cast his eye down, and of his mercy and fraternal pity, surprised in heart, full of compassion, and began to complain of their infection. Alas, quote he, how came this adventure? Under what ford or false constellation, or in what hour had ye your engender? But since this mischief is to you befall, there is nothing which is more expedient than to choose one out amongst us all, without spot or clear of his intent, for you to die by his own assent to save the people from their damnation, and with his blood, ere you be fully shent, to make of his mercy your remission. The which liquor most wholesome is and good against leprous humours and false infections, when from a vein taken is the blood, cleansing each part from all corruptions, the original taken from generations, which is descended down from stock royal, nourished with milk of pure complexion, with menstrues which are not superficial. But. When the brethren of this worthy king heard the language, they fell in full great dread, full sore weeping, and said in complaining that none of them was able to bleed, because their blood was infectious indeed, and of corrupt blood made is no sacrifice. Wherefore, alas, there is no way to speed that we can find to help us in any wise. For of our birth and of our original, clearly and truly to make mention, excuse is there none in part nor in all. In sin was first our conception, our bringing forth and generation fulfilled was in sorrow and wickedness, and our mother in a short conclusion with corrupt milk us fostered in distress. For who may make that seed to be clean that first was conceived in uncleanness? For cankered rust may never, I mean, by no craft show forth perfect brightness. Now let us all at once our course address, and go unto our mother, and ask by and by the final cause of our corrupt sickness, that she declare unto us the cause and why. The said children uprose in a fury of woeful rage, and went by one ascent unto their mother, that called was Mercury, requiring her by great advisement, before her goddesses being every one present, to tell them truly and in no part to feign why their nature was corrupt and shent, that caused them ever more to weep and complain. To whom the mother full bright of face and hue gave this answer, remembered in scripture, 
First when I was wedded anew, I conceived by process of true nature, a child of seed that was most clean and pure, undefiled most orient, fair and bright, of all the planets chief of engender, which now in heaven giveth so clear a light, whose complexion is most temperate, in heat and cold, and in humidity, in earth also that there is no debate, nor no repugnance by no quality, nor none occasion of none infirmity, that among them there may be no discord, so well proportioned every each in his degree, each hour and space they be of so true accord. Whose nature is so imperial, that fire so burning doth him no distress. His royal kind is so celestial, of corruption he taketh no sickness. Fire, water, air, nor earth with his dryness, neither of them may alter his complexion. He fixeth spirits through his high nobleness, saveth infected bodies from their corruption. His heavenly health, death, may not assail. He dreadeth no venom, nor needeth no treacle. Wind, tempest, nay, weather against him may prevail. So high in heaven is his tabernacle. In earth he worketh many a miracle. He cureth lepers and fetcheth home fugitive, and to gouting eye giveth a clear spectacle. Them to go that lame one all their life. He is my son, and I his mother dear, by me conceived truly in marriage. As touching your birth, the sickness doth appear of menstruous blood brought forth in tender age. Your lepry is showed in body and in visage to make your whole medicine is no other drink nor potion to your advantage but the pure blood of him that is your dear brother. A good shepherd must die for his sheep without grudging to speak in words plain and semblable take hereof good keep your brother must die and new be born again though he be old be hereof well certain to youth again he must be renewed and suffer passion or else all were vain then rising again right fresh and well hewed old eisen was made young by media with her drinks and with her potions so must your brother of pure volunta die and be young through his operation, and that through subtle nature's confections, by whose death plainly to express, ye shall be purged from all infections, and your soul lepry changed to cleanness. With the said words, the king began to abrade the tale adverting that she had told. How might a man by nature, thus he said, be born again, namely when he is old? Then said his mother, by reason manifold, But if the gospel thus doth mean, in water and spirit be renovate hot and cold, then he shall never plainly come into heaven. The king was thristy and heavy of cheer. Upon his knees meekly kneeled down, prayed his father in full low manner to translate the chalice of his passion. But, for he thought, the redemption of his brethren might not be fulfilled without his death, nor their salvation. For them to suffer, he was right willed, and for to accomplish his purpose and sentence. By clear example, who so looketh right, heavy things from their circumference must up ascend, and after be made light, and things light ready to the flight must descend to the center down, by interchanging of nature's might, as they be moved by mean of revolution. So, as Jupiter in a cloud of gold changed himself by transformation, and descended, from his heavenly hold, like a golden dew, unto Dinah down, 
and she conceived, as is made mention, by influence of his power divine. Right so shall Phoebus, right sovereign of renown, to be conceived of his golden reign, decline. And to comfort his brethren that were full dull, the sun hath chosen without mar or strife the bright moon, when she was at the full, to be his mother first and after his wedded wife. In time of ver, the season vegetative, in Aries, when Titan doth appear, inspired by grace with the spirit of life, this marriage hallowed at midday sphere. And at this feast were the gods all. Saturn from blackness was turned to white, and Jupiter let his mantle fall, full pale and meager of great delight, clothed in lilies, that every manner white of heaven and earth and gods of the sea rejoiced in heart and were full glad and light to be present at this great solemnity. Mars forgot there his sturdy black hardiness, cast off his hebergen fret with old rust. Venus forsook her mineral redness, took gold for green, and she again also for lust, because she had in Phoebus such a trust that he should this feast hold of most nobleness, of brotherly pity needs as he must, give her a mantle of oriental brightness. After this wedding here afore devised, a fair Phoebus and fresh Lucine, philosophers have prudently practiced a closet round by their wise doctrine, clear as crystal of glass, a little shrine, with heavenly dew stuffed that dungeon, kept night and day with glorious maidens nine, to keep the queen in her conception. Religiously they kept their silence, till that from heaven, there a royal light, and there, with all in open audience, was heard a voice almost at midnight, among the virgins most amiable of sight, that said unto them, To save that was forlorn, I must again through my imperial might be of my mother new conceived and born. I must pass by water and by fire, the burnt abide and therefrom not decline. To save my brethren I have so great desire, with new light their darkness to illumine. But sore I dread that venomous serpentine, which ever advanceth with his violence, my tender youth to hurt and to envenom. But in your keeping do you your diligence. The king thus entered in his bed royal, the queen conceived under a sun bright, under her feet a mount like crystal, which had devoured her husband anon right dead of desire and in the maiden's sight, lost all the color of his fresh face. Thus was he dead. The maiden's feeble of might, despaired, slept in the same place. The serpent, bold, shed out his poison. The queen and maidens, for fear, took them to flight seven times, ascending up and down within a vault, now dark, now clear of light. Their generation was so strong of might, after death now passeth purgatory, to resurrection as any sun bright, things that were lost to bring to his glory. The queen took her full possession, the soul reviving of the dead king. But of old hatred the toxicate poison was by the serpent cast into their hindering. The prince was buried, but of his rising the brethren were glad the truth was seen when they were washed by his natural cleansing and their old leprosy by miracle was made clean. The full moon half shadowed the sun to put away the burning of his light. Black shadowed first, the skies were so done, 
The raven's bill began, who looketh right, Blacker than jet, or bugle to sight. But little and little, by ordinary appearance, The temperate fire with his cherishing might Turned all to white, but with no violence. Time to the queen approached of childing. The child of nature was ready to fly. Passage was there, none, to his outgoing. He spread his wings and found no liberty. Of nine virgins, he devoured three, the other six most excellent and fair, fearful for dread in their greatest beauty, spread their feathers and flew forth in the air. The child colored first black, and after white, having no heat in very existence, but by cherishing of the sun bright, of foreign fire there was no violence, save let men say which have experience, he drank such plenty of the water of the well, that his six sisters made no resistance, but would have devoured. Dastin can you tell. Sometimes black, sometimes was he red, now like ashes, now citrine of color, now of saffron hue, now sanguine was his head, now white as a lily he showed him in his bower. The moon gave nourishment to him in his labor, and with all their force did their business to clothe him fresher than any flower with a mantle of everlasting whiteness. Herein ends the dream or visual of John Dastin.